Well, we'll have a full basket of political stories, and uh, mm -hmm. that's uh, where our Rise Director of News and Politics, Editor Sumner Sambo, comes in. Good to see you, and thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Edo State, let's start from there, is mm -hmm. still very much in the news. It has refused to go, and we understand that the panel finally has uh, met uh, and given the Deputy Governor 24 hours uh, to make himself available. Yeah, I mean, very good um, opportunity for him to present himself, though he had said that uh, there's a valid court order that still subsisted and that uh, the panel had not given him enough uh, room. But I will advise that uh, he should try to make himself available. I mean, because, uh, you see, it's justifiable when you, as, as someone who's facing an impeachment proceeding, for you to actually be heard. Mm. In this instance, if he's not heard and he keeps shying away from this panel, the tendency is that, uh, I mean, it may just look like he has a lot to hide. Uh, yeah, I know that he's been trying to say that there's a subsisting court order, but I mean, this panel has been rightfully constituted. So, uh, I mean, it's also for the panel to actually take a critical look at the court order and see if indeed it was genuinely uh, brought in place. I mean, there's no reason why uh, there shouldn't be a win-win solution in this instance. So, uh, and if that court order is genuine, then the panel has no uh, uh, right to continue. So, they'll have to wait until the right thing is done. But for him, I would say that uh, politically, I don't see where most, uh, you know, deputy governors have survived an impeachment because it falls within the jurisdiction of the uh, House of Assembly to set up uh, uh, a panel and eventually once they do that they, they shift the responsibility to, to the judiciary and the judiciary just has to do its job yeah. so whether he appears or he doesn't I mean the panel has to submit a report so mm. I, I would just advise that you know he looks for uh, a way and get proper guidance from his lawyers to be able to know how to do the right thing instead of just saying that he won't go away but 24 what? hours too giving him that order I think uh, there's a lot of moves, I mean, a, a lot of moves being pushed from behind and uh, the panel has to be careful not to be seen, to be tilted to one side. Too. Right. I wonder what uh, uh, his handlers can advise him on mm -hmm. at this time. Just like we were saying earlier, uh, mm -hmm. the seeming disloyalty is never forgiven in yeah, this I part, mean, in is politics, it? I and mean. Felix Joaibu uh, <laughs> must be learning a great lesson in that. Let's mm. go to River State. It, I mean, it looks like uh, Fubara is becoming the strong man of River State, taking after his uh, <laughs> Well, it was just a matter of time. I mean, the, the, the fear of Fubara seems to be the beginning of wisdom here. Yeah, I mean, well, there's it was just much a, ado about the list. Tell yeah, us. it was just a matter yeah. of time. But, I mean, you see that the governor is already flexing his muscles, and you would have seen that. Tony Okocha, the APC caretaker committee chairman, actually, uh, you know, already shouting because, I mean, he was a former chief of staff himself. Mm -hmm. He knows that these are the things that they do. And the sitting governor, I mean, who has all the powers to be able to do all, I mean, several things within the state, he's got the right to be able to defend his uh, political career because his political career is at stake here. Uh, and uh, you would have seen that the accusation actually is that... Uh, uh, he wants to change the caretaker. Uh, he wants to bring in the caretaker committee mm -hmm. chairman for the local governments, and he's trying to look for a court order and all of that. And then you will now find out that there are accusations that he's not implementing uh, the uh, the agreement, the agreement yeah, the peace deal, and all mm -hmm. of that. So the question is, the other side, the state house of assembly and the wiki side, are they also implementing the peace deal? That's a question. Uh, because I mean, legally, I mean, most of these house of uh, assembly members had defected. So legally, can we say that whatever the the house has is constituted is legal? Right. Uh, because that is the situation. They are saying that he's implementing a budget that is illegal because the majority of the House members they didn't pass it. Mm. But also, do the majority of members who are sitting at the House of Assembly are they legal? This is a real Actually. conundrum. How do you yeah, I mean, how because, get I mean, out they of all this? said that they are defected to yeah. another political party. But until we had this peace deal. So why don't they just all sit down and allow governance to take the center stage instead of all of this? And uh, the uh, the uh, governor himself should be very careful because, I mean, for those who are advising him too, because he signed lots of agreements, he did lots of things to be in the good books of Nyesom Wiki to be there. Yeah, but how binding yeah, are those agreements? The, I mean. Yeah, I mean, well, they are not really binding yeah. legally, but mm. politically, I mean, even yeah. having decided to sign to the agreement paper. with uh, uh, President Tinubu, I mean, there mm. are so many things you can't run away from. 
uh, but he's already uh, uh, saying that this time around he's prepared, I mean, to discipline uh, the wicked boys, as they may like to call themselves. But nonetheless, they should understand here, critically, that the people of Rivers are looking for good governance. And mm. all these political tactics and strategies, that's why for people like Nyesom Wike, I don't expect him to still be giving himself too much headache. Uh, the yeah. thing here actually is that he had a plan to become the Jagaban of Rivers politics. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, it's that not was easy it. to yeah, be a Jagaban. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's not easy to be a, you can be a Jagaban in Lagos, uh, it becomes much easier, and then you are appointing governors uh, mm. uh, through a sort of election and having a stranglehold on the APC. But in Rivers, it's a different ball game. There are too many heavy political weights in Rivers for Nyesom Muke to want to stand and challenge the status quo and go scot free. And mm. so that's why President Tunbu has, uh, you know, prepared a soft landing for for former governor Nyesom Wike. Right. But it looks like he's also trying to dare the president. And I'm very sorry for him, despite the performance he's putting up at uh, the FCT here. If he goes beyond certain levels, I mean, the governor is not uh, a, a, an appointed minister. He's an elected governor. Mm -hmm. With president immunity. Tinubu can, yeah, I mean, with immunity. President Tinubu can do certain things to him, but he has given Wike a soft landing. So if Wike doesn't know how to manage this situation, yeah. I'm telling you it may just be the end of his political career, totally, because the only thing that's left now is for President Tinubu to sack him. And people are already saying that, irrespective yeah. of what he has done, He's not a member of the All Progressives Congress, but if he wants to cause problems for their government and maybe but, lead to a state but, of but, emergency in Rivers, do you mm, think that they will allow him? But again, again, let, let, some let, of the let, listening to you, Sam, now, one thing here, one thing which is key uh, is that politics or promises are not meant to be broken politically if you take it away from what we've seen in uh, Edo State and so many other states. And now, let's. Uh, bring back uh, Governor Fubra here and uh, former Governor uh, the yes, Minister Yesenwike. Uh, is it wrong in politics uh, to uh, be seen to be building and grooming your political structure or empire? Because that uh, is what politics is, is about. If you look at it, even in the United States, we've seen what pr Trump is doing with his followers. So standing by your people, irrespective of what exactly is happening at the moment. So where is the governor or the former governor uh, going out of order in what they're doing. It looks like it's a good fight. So let, let the best person win. Yeah, because uh, politically, they're, they're politically. It's a good fight on both sides. I can tell you that Nyesom Wike, uh, having done a lot of things to bring uh, Fubara uh, to, to governance, I can tell you that he's fighting strategically for his own political life too. Yeah. And so... Governor Fubara should be very careful about those who are also giving him all sort of political advice here and there. Because when he was signing all these agreements, entering into all sort of deals with Nyesom Wike, these people were not there with him. Which is yes. what Nyesom Wike yes. said Yes, too. yes. I mean, said he that said much. that. But Nyesom Wike also violated deals that he signed <laughs> with other former governors, including former governor. Peter uh, 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 yeah, I mean, apart from that, mm. Haba Mechi and all of that. Right. He entered into several deals, including with former... Uh, 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 First Lady Patience Jonathan and all of that, the Jonathan family. We all know what happened and all of that, including the fact that he was nominated as the Minister of State for Education. Then he wasn't supposed to be the one that was that would have been nominated. Mm. The immediate past APC uh, uh, governorship candidate is the one who was supposed to have been nominated to be Minister of State for Education then. Right. But of course, we all know what happened and all of that. And yes, on weekend was brought in. And so, didn't he pay back the other people in the bad coin? Including now with the other lease, after all he has said, I'm just mentioning one man and one woman now. I mean, you would have known that uh, this is political betrayal. But in a nutshell, what Wike is trying to do is to try to fight for his own political life in rivers. But is he and going Governor about Fubara it? has the, to be very careful. Back to that question. Yes. Is there anything wrong with trying to maintain or sustain your political structure? On There's the one nothing hand. wrong. But how do you, you how best governor. do you go about it without? You yes, know. <laughs> I mean, what he is trying to do right, right. now is act actually trying to upset the apple cart mm -hmm. in that state when there is a new sheriff in town. in town. You and I know that the governor also has to fight for his own political life. There you go. So if he gives in to Wiki, then he has already lost the second term because it's this structure, starting from the local government and all of that. If he's able to put his own caretaker committee chairman, then his men will be there because most of the people who are there are Nyesom Wiki appointed. They still have loyalty. Look at all the appointments. Even today, Nyesom Wiki still made an appointment in the FCT here to someone from River State. 
And people mm. are wondering why is Nyeso Mwike carrying all his lo loyalty from Riverside and bringing it to so their city? city. Why? Because he wants to fish. pay some political, uh, uh, you know, patronage, uh, patronage here and there mm. so as to boost his own chances. But is Mwike still going to contest for governorship in uh, River State? No. no. So why doesn't he allow the person who's already there and to continue with that's why the, the grassroots development initiative, which Wike himself, yes. I mean, started, yeah. uh, have uh, withdrawn already, from him. They've, they've withdrawn said, and gone to the incumbent because yeah. there's a sitting... Can you imagine, for example, uh, uh, President Buhari's loyalists coming to stand against uh, 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 Tunubu in government when Tunubu is the president? That is what Nyeson Wike is trying mm. to do. Who would allow that? Can President Tunubu allow former President Buhari to stay and be dictating to him what to do in his government and not to do? Even former President Buhari knows the consequence. So mm. it's the same thing politically. When someone has been elected, allow him to run his government. Whatever you Simple did was out of legal uh, this embed. That's why I said that President Tinubu, in his own wisdom, politically smart give fellow a, here, gave landing. him a soft landing. I right. said, look, I've given you this. Look, what, what's left for you to demystify Wikina? It's just for you to remove him. Remove the rug off his feet as Minister of the Federal Republic Some of Nigeria. Sambo, you did not say that here. <laughs> I mean, and that would be all. And if you do that and you remove him as right. Minister, even a local government chairman, you'll be looking for it. Oh because my. you need political power to be able to stand and fight your opponent. Mm. But President Tinubu continues to give him that leverage. So let him respect the office of the president, the position of the uh, president in the APC, mm. and the position of the president that he is not a member of their party, but he was still brought into the table. Right. So, so it shouldn't make words, things we, bad we, we, for we, President Tinubu. We, ha we, we haven't seen the last in Rivers. Yeah, mm. we haven't seen it, but mm. he has to be very careful, like yeah. I said. If the rug of ministerial appointment is removed from his feet, you'll be holding on to even local government appointment to be relevant in Rivers' politics. Well, good old wisdom says, guarantee others their space and your space will be guaranteed, I guess. Don't run don't space with anyone. <laughs> Some so, we we'll have to say oh, thank you very much. Like speaking with you Always. on politics here in Nigeria. <laughs>